Well, hello there. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you again for joining us for our daily Bible reading time. This is uh, day 230 of our chronological journey through the Bible in a year, and or night 230 if you're joining us at nighttime, or if it's day one or something else for you. That's wonderful. Thank you for joining us, because any day is a great day to start reading God's Word. And for this time, we're going to be uh, in the book of Jeremiah, Yermiah, we're going to cover chapters 38 to 40, and then we're going to pick up a couple of psalms also, Psalm 74 and Psalm 79. So with all that, if you're ready to go, let's begin. Yermiah thrown into a cistern, chapter 38. Now Shephatiah, son of Matan, Gedaliah, son of Pashur, Yukal, son of Shlemiah, and Pashur, son of Malchiah, heard the words Jeremiah was speaking to all the people. This is what the Lord says. Whoever stays in this city will die by the sword, famine, and plague. But whoever surrenders to the Kastim will live. He will retain his life like the spoils of war and will live. This is what the Lord says. This city will most certainly be handed over to the king of Avel's army, and he will capture it. The officials then said to the king, This man ought to die because he is weakening the morale of the warriors who remain in this city and of all the people by speaking to them in this way. This man is not pursuing the welfare of this people, but their harm. King Siddiquiah said, here he is. He's in your hands, since the king can't do anything against you. So they took Yermiah and dropped him into the cistern of Malkiah, the king's son, which was in the guard's courtyard, lowering Yermiah with ropes. There was no water in the cistern, only mud, and Yermiah sank in the mud. But Evid Melik, a Kushite, court official in the king's palace, heard Yermiah had been put into the cistern. While the king was sitting at the Benjamin gate, Evid Melech went from the king's palace and spoke to the king. My lord the king, these men have been evil in all they have done to the prophet Yermiah. They have dropped him into the cistern where he will die from hunger, because there is no more bread in the city. So the king commanded Ebed Melech, the Cushite, Take from here thirty men under your authority, and pull the prophet Yermia up from the cistern before he dies. So Ebed Melech took the men under his authority, and went to the king's palace, to a place below the storehouse. From there he took, an old, he took old rags and worn out clothes, and lowered them by ropes to Yermiah in the cistern. Avid Melik the Cushite called down to Yermiah, place these, rag, place these old rags and clothes between your armpits and the ropes. Yermiah did this. They pulled him up with the ropes and lifted him out of the cistern, but he remained in the guard's courtyard. Sidekiah's final meeting with Yermiah. King Siddiquiah sent for the prophet Yermiah and received him at the third entrance of the Lord's temple. The king said to Yermiah, I am going to ask you something. Don't hide anything from me. Yermiah replied to Siddiquiah, If I tell you, you will kill me, won't you? Besides, if I give you advice, you won't listen to me anyway. King Siddiquiah swore to Yermiah in private, As the Lord lives, who has given us this life, I will not kill you or hand you over to these men who intend to take your life. Yermiah therefore said to Siddiquiah, This is what the Lord, the God of armies, the God of Israel says, If indeed you surrender to the officials of the king of Babel, then you will live. This city will not be burned, and you and your household will survive. 
but if you will not surrender to the officials of the king of Vavel, then this city will be handed over to the Kastim. They will burn it, and you yourself will not escape from them. But King Sidekia said to Yeremia, I am worried about the Judeans who have defected to the Kastim. They may hand me over to the Judeans to abuse me. They will not hand you over, Yermia replied. Obey the Lord in what I am telling you, so it may go well for you and you can live. But if you refuse to surrender, this is the verdict that the Lord has shown to me. All the women who remain in the palace of Yudas king will be brought out to the officials of the king of Babel and will say to you, You trusted friends, your trusted friends misled you and overcame you. Your feet sank into the mire and they deserted you. All your wives and children will be brought out to the Kastim. You yourself will not escape from them, for you will be seized by the king of Vavel, and this city will burn. Then Sidekia warned Yermia, Don't let anyone know about this conversation, or you will die. The officials may hear that I have spoken with you, and come and demand of you. Tell us what you said to the king. Don't hide anything from us, and we won't kill you. Also, what did the king say to you? If they do, tell them, I was bringing before the king my petition, that he not return me to the house of Yonatan to die there. All the officials did come to Yirmiya, and they questioned him. He reported the exact words to them the king had commanded, and they quit speaking with him because the conversation had not been overheard. Yermia remained in the guard's courtyard until the day Yerushalayim was captured, and he was there when it happened. The Fall of Yerushalayim to Babel, Chapter 39 In the ninth year of King Sedekiah of Judah, in the tenth month, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babel advanced against Yerushalayim with his entire army, and laid siege to it. In the fourth month of Zedekiah's eleventh year, on the ninth day of the month, the city was broken into. All the officials of the king of Babel entered and sat at the middle gate. Nergar Shereser, Samgar, Nebusar Sechim, the chief of staff, Nergar Shereser, the chief soothsayer, and all the rest of the officials of Babel's king. When King Sedekiah of Judah and all the fighting men saw them, they fled. They left the city at night by way of the king's garden through the city gate between the two walls. They left along the route to Araba. However, the Kazdim army pursued them and overtook Sedekiah in the plains of Jericho. They arrested him and brought him up to Nebuchadnezzar, Babel's king, at Riblah in the land of Hamat. The king passed sentence on him there. At Riblah, the king of Babel slaughtered Zedekiah's sons before his eyes, and he also slaughtered all Judah's nobles. Then he blinded Zedekiah and put him in bronze chains to take him to Babel. The Kastim next burned down the king's palace and the people's houses and tore down the walls of Jerusalem. Nebu Saradan, the captain of the guards, deported the rest of the people to Babel, those who had remained in the city and those deserters who had defected to him along with the rest of the people who remained. However, Nebu Saradan, the captain of the guards, left in the land of Judah some of the poor people who owned nothing, and he gave them vineyards and fields at that time. Yeremiah freed by Nebuchadnezzar. Speaking through Nebuchadnezzar, captain of the guards, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babel gave orders concerning Yeremiah. Take him and look after him. Don't do him any harm but do for him whatever he says. 
Nebuchadnezzar, captain of the guards, Nebuchadnezzar, the, the chief of staff, Nergar Shareser, the chief soothsayer, and all the captains of Babel's king, had Yirmiya brought from the guards, the guards' courtyard and turned him over to Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, son of Shaphan, to take him home. So he settled among his own people. Now the word of the Lord had come to Yermia when he was confined in the guard's courtyard. Go tell Avid Melech the Cushite, this is what the Lord of armies, the God of Israel, says. I am about to fulfill my words for disaster and not for good against this city. They will take place before your eyes on that day, but I will rescue you on that day. This is the Lord's declaration, and you will not be handed over to the men you dread. Indeed, I will certainly deliver you so that you do not fall by the sword. Because you have trusted in me, you will retain your life like the spoils of war. This is the Lord's declaration. Yeremia stays in Judah, chapter 40. This is the word that came to Yeremia from the Lord after Nebuchadnezzar, captain of the guards, released him at Ramah. When he found him, he was bound in chains with all the exiles of Jerusalem and Judah, who were being exiled to Babel. The captain of the guards took Yermia and said to him, The Lord your God decreed this disaster on this place, and the Lord has fulfilled it. He has done just what he decreed, because your, you people have sinned against the Lord and have not obeyed him. This thing has happened. Now pay attention. Today I am setting you free from the chains that were on your hands. If it pleases you to come with me to Babel, come, and I will take care of you. But if it seems wrong to you to come with me to Babel, go no farther. Look, the whole land is in front of you. Wherever it seems good and right for you to go, Go there. When Yermia had not yet re had not yet turned to go, Nebu Saradan said to him, Return to Gadaliah, son of Ahikam, son of Shaphan, whom the king of Avel has appointed over the cities of Judah, and stay with him among the people, or go wherever it seems right for you to go. So the captain of the guards gave him a nation, a ration and a gift and released him. Yeremia therefore went to Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, at Mitzpah, and he stayed with him among the people who remained in the land. Gedaliah advises peace. All the commanders of the armies that were in the countryside, they and their men, heard that the king of Babel had appointed Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, over the land. He had been put in charge of the men, women, and children from among the poorest of the land, who had not been deported to Babel. So they came to Gedaliah at Mitzpah. The commanders included Ishmael, son of Netanyah, Yohanan, and Jonathan, the sons of Karhiah, Serayah, son of Tanhumet, the sons of Ephai, the Netophathite, and Yesaniah, son of Mahakathite, son of the Mahakathite, they and their men. Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, son of Shaphan, swore an oath to them and their men, assuring them, Don't be afraid to serve the Kastim. Live in the land and serve the king of Vavel, and it will go well for you. As for me, I am going to live in Mitzpah to represent you before the Kastim who come to us. As for you, gather wine, summer fruit, and oil. Place them in your storage jars and live in the cities you have captured. When all the Judeans in Moab and among the Ammonites and in Edom and in all the other lands also heard that the king of Babel had left a remnant in Judah, 
and had appointed Gedaliah son of Ahikam, son of Shaphan, over them, they all returned from all the places where they had been banished, and came to the land of Judah, to Gedaliah at Mitzpah, and harvested a great amount of wine and summer fruit. Meanwhile, Yohanan, son of Karhiah, and all the commanders of the armies in the countryside came to Gedaliah at Mitzpah and warned him, Don't, do, don't you realize that Bahalis, king of the Ammonites, has sent Ishmael, son of Netanyah, to kill you? But Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, would not believe them. Then Yohanan, son of Karyah, suggested to Gedaliah in private at Mitzpah, Let me go kill Ishmael, son of Netanyah. No one will know it. Why should he kill you and allow all of Judah that is gathered around you to scatter and the remnant of Judah to perish? But Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, responded to Yohanan, son of Karyah, Don't do that. What you're saying about Ishmael is a lie. And now let's jump over to the Psalms, and we'll capture two of them, Psalm 74 first. Prayer for Israel, a maskil of Asaf. Why have you rejected us forever, God? Why does your anger burn against the sheep of your pasture? Remember your congregation, which you purchased long ago and redeemed as the tribe for your own possession. Remember Mount Sion, where you dwell. Make your way to the perpetual ruins, to all that the enemy has destroyed in the sanctuary. Your adversaries roared in the meeting place where you met with us. They set up their emblems as signs. It was like men in a thicket of trees, wielding axes, then smashing all the carvings with hatchets and picks. They set your sanctuary on fire. They utterly desecrated the dwelling place of your name. They said in their hearts, let's oppress them relentlessly. They burned every place throughout the land where God met with us. There are no signs for us to see. There is no longer a prophet, and none of us knows how long this will last. God, how long will the enemy mock? Will the foe insult your name forever? Why do you hold back your hand? Stretch out your right hand and destroy them. God, my king, is from ancient times performing saving acts on the earth. You divided the sea with your strength. You smashed the heads of the sea monsters in the water. You crushed the heads of Leviathan. You fed him to the creatures of the desert. You opened up springs and streams. You dried up ever-flowing rivers. The day is yours, also the night. You established the moon and the sun. You set all the boundaries of the earth. You made summer and winter. Remember this, the enemy has mocked the Lord, and a foolish people has insulted your name. Do not give to beasts the life of your dove. Do not forgive the lives of your poor people forever. Consider the covenant for the dark places of the land are full of violence. Do not let the oppressed turn away in shame. Let the poor and needy praise your name. Rise up, God, champion your cause. Remember the insults that fools bring against you all day long. Do not forget the clamor of your adversaries, the tumult of your opponents, that goes up constantly. And now Psalm 79, Faith and Confusion, a Psalm of Asaph. God, the nations have invaded your inheritance, desecrated your holy temple, and turned Jerusalem into ruins. 
They gave the corpses of your servants to the birds of the sky for food, the flesh of your faithful ones to the beasts of the earth. They poured out their blood like water all around Jerusalem, and there was no one to bury them. We have become an object of reproach to our neighbors, a source of mockery and ridicule to those around us. How long, Lord, will you be angry forever? Will your jealousy keep burning like fire? Pour out your wrath on the nations that don't acknowledge you, on the kingdoms that don't call on your name. For they have devoured Jacob and devastated his homeland. Do not hold past iniquities against us. Let your compassion come to us quickly, for we have become very weak. God of our salvation, help us for the glory of your name. Rescue us and atone for our sins for your name's sake. Why should the nations ask, where is their God? Before our eyes, let vengeance for the shed blood of your servants be known among the nations. Let the groans of the prisoners reach you. According to your great power, preserve those condemned to die. Pay back sevenfold to our neighbors the reproach they have hurled at you, Lord. Then we, your people, the sheep of your pasture, will thank you forever. We will declare your praise to generation after generation. May the Lord bless the reading and study of his word.